What's up everybody, Drew here. Today's video is a good one. I have, um, ever since I started my channel, I often get asked the question, how much should I charge? It's a super complicated question because it depends on a bunch of different factors, right? So you have to understand where do you, um, what area are you servicing? Um, what is the average price for rentals, meaning your competition? And <clears throat> what exactly, like what type of photo booth are you doing? So a 360 photo booth, you're going to be charging a different price from someone that is doing a iPad booth, right? Digital only, or a, someone that's doing a traditional DSLR print booth, because it's just it's just a different type of service, and you know you have over a lot more overhead when you're doing prints because you have to pay for the prints, and obviously you're using you know more expensive equipment. So the easiest way I think you can find out the pricing and what you should charge is just to basically get like an idea of what everyone else is charging because that is important obviously you know you can charge whatever you'd like but you think the average customer is going to be shopping around they're going to they're going to find out what the average price is and what the rates are and what everyone is charging so i would highly recommend you know <clears throat> go to craigslist go to google type in you know photo booth type in your area see what comes up and just start writing down the numbers and what people are offering and you can kind of gauge what uh, what the price is. So this is gonna help you a lot because you don't wanna <laughs> just make up a number and end up charging too much to the point to where, you know, you're not gonna see much conversions when people reach out and get a quote from you. But then you don't wanna charge too little to where it's not worth your time and you may be even losing money and it just doesn't become worth it. So I, um, I highly, highly suggest you do that. And then once you figure out a num that number, right, like the average, it's up to you. Do you want to basically average that, M match it, I mean, you know, match that average rate? Or, you know, what I always suggest to people is just bring that price down a little bit because um, a lot of people will just end up going with the person that's a, a little bit more affordable. So that is kind of how you can find out what you should charge and what you um, what the market is. I know it sounds super simple, but it's just it's just one of those things where you just have to take an hour and just really just dive in and find out. And then also, I think it's really important for you guys to see what your um, <clears throat> what's your cost, right? Like how, how much is it going to cost you to do a three hour event if you're doing prints or if you have a 360 booth, like factor in every single thing. You had to factor in your gas, like how much are you paying for insurance? Um, you know, what are your software fees for the month if you're doing prints? You know, how much does it cost you per print? And just kind of get that number because if you're close to that number or below it, obviously that's not good. You're losing money. No one's in business to lose money. Um, yeah, and I think it's, um, you know, I I personally like to do a la carte style. So um, you've seen my other videos. You guys know that I do. We start off with the iPad photo booth. Um, it starts off at a base rate. So right now we're doing like $300 lets them have it for the whole day. But that is just a low number to get the people interested, right? Because they're always looking for the best deal. But what I don't include and I let them know is that the backdrop is 100 if they want to rent it. You know, props is $50 if you want props for event. And then I withhold some features from the software like the video, GIF, and Boomerang. And if they want to add that, that's an extra $75. And then there's some other little, you know, <clears throat> upgrades like the Jackery, I charge $75 if they want us to bring our Jackery. And I'm telling you, people rent the Jackery because <clears throat> they may not be confident that there's going to be a plug or an outlet nearby. So, you know, that Jackery's paid for itself 10 times. I absolutely love the Jackery. I will leave my affiliate link to buy the Jackery in the description. Um, and it's just great to have one. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, back to the topic is the price and um, I guess we can speak on deposits um, because it is it is part of what you are charging and this is part of the, you know, the money talk. So I highly recommend everybody make sure you collect a deposit. It's going to do two things, right? It's going to, one, bring in cash flow, meaning you're going to have money coming in more consistently earlier because you're taking the deposit. And it's also going to weed out the people that are not serious. You don't want to get hired from someone and not get a deposit. And then you book, you know, you, you X out that day, right? Let's just say next Saturday. And then they end up flaking. Then Friday comes along. They say, hey, we can't, we, we are going to cancel the reservation. Sorry. Then you have no work. You have no deposit. You have nothing. 
and now you're now you're out of jobs. So um, price of the deposit, you know, I, I personally like to leave it like at a hundred bucks. Um, that way, you know, it's a uh, showing me that they're serious. Then I have that extra one hundred dollars every time someone books, and um, yeah, I don't want to. I don't, you know, a lot of people want to get like half half of it right away or even in full. I think a lot of people don't want to pay that, and um, it's like a trust thing too. You know, a lot of people are still like weary. Weary is that a word? They're afraid to give money to like a stranger, um, someone they haven't met online. So you know, keeping it low is, in my opinion, probably the best bet. And um, you know, when you get the rest of the money, that's totally up to you. Um, I would definitely recommend trying getting, getting it about a month before the event or two weeks before the event. That way, again, you have more cash flow coming in and obviously cash flow is everything. You know, the more money you can collect earlier, the more money you could either reinvest in your business or money that you can just have for your bills. Cause let's just be honest, you know, the photo booth business is great. And I just know about, I would say about 80% of everyone that's like, you know, I've gotten started in the business. It's just doing it for side money and there's totally nothing wrong with that but you can definitely scale this business up and make it a full-time gig. So um, I hope that's helped you guys um, with your, I don't know, I guess with that question, how much should I charge? But you guys don't have to do it like me. You don't, you don't have to, you know, do let them have it for the full day, not charge hourly, or, you know, you could put your full price, right? Like you can have it for the booth for everything. And it's just one set price and you can do it hourly. It's totally up to you. That's just the way I do it. And it's just the way it's been working for me. But I uh, hope this has been helpful. Um, I appreciate you guys. I'm going to be making so many more videos now that I have our showroom because I'm just here. I Now I constantly see all my photo booth equipment and I'm just like, I just have that motivation to make more content. So I uh, love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.